Hello, welcome to Gamegasm. I'm Jay. I'm Dan. And what are we playing today then, Dan? I'm playing one of my favourite games of all time on the original N64, uh, Banjo-Kazooie. Wow. Which is okay. one of Rare's uh, most successful games um, of its most successful era. Yeah, so, so one of the biggest games on the N64. And was, yeah. one of the only ones I probably haven't played on the N64. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, if, you've, if you haven't played this yet, you've got a, a beautiful uh, retro gaming experience to come <laughs> at some point. I'm just going to jump in here. Yeah, so we're not right at the start of the game, are we? You did no, do I a did, little I've bit. done the... There's a, there's a, a really cool sort of... Um, I, I hasten to use the word tutorial, but uh, it's it's better than that somehow. But yeah, there's a there's an outdoor area where you learn the moves and everything before you get into the, the sort of lair area. Well, we didn't want to force you to sit through that. No, no, you'll... Uh, that's more interesting to play than watch. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, this is Banjo. Um, some of you might have played it more recently because you can play it on the uh, 360 in uh, HD widescreen and the Xbox One, believe it or not. There are games on the Xbox One. <laughs> They're old games. Yeah. But, but there uh, are games on it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're playing it so on the original N64, so it's, it doesn't look great, does it? I, I, I always get this with the uh, N64 on HD TV. It's like... Oh. It didn't look like this back in the day. and uh, Yeah, it didn't look like this back in the day. It's, uh, it's kind of disappointing, isn't it? But the uh, the N64 always did have a bit of a, uh, a smudgy kind of look. It couldn't cope with the 3D graphics as well as, say, the PlayStation no. could, could it, to be to be honest. But back in the days of the old um, CRT televisions, yeah. you couldn't see it. No, you really couldn't. Unfortunately, now I think they you used, can. I, I think they used that to their advantage back in the day and hid quite a lot of little tricks uh, <laughs> behind the, the fact that you couldn't see certain things but now you can see it all yeah unfortunately I also know a little fact I don't know the ins and outs of this but I'm pretty sure the N64 was actually a, a 32 bit console just like the PlayStation it was just better at 3D oh, okay so there's a lot the N64 couldn't do that the PlayStation could and also vice versa is so. that for the, the limitations on a cartridge rather than a disc do you reckon possibly yeah at Nintendo and their cartridges anyway they absolutely insisted on doing cartridges for the N64 and it really, really bit them in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the idea of the game, for anyone who hasn't played it, is to collect these jigsaw pieces which complete paintings in the witch's lair. Uh, and those paintings open um, the levels up. Basically, there's nine levels, ten jigsaw pieces in each level, and then ten pieces in the lair as well, sort of hidden. So there's a hundred, basically. So similar to uh, Super Mario 64 and the stars. Yes, basically. I think, I mean... I'll probably get lynched for this, but I preferred this to Mario 64. I think Rare took what, what Nintendo had invented. So that Nintendo, yeah, you get the credit for coming up with 3D platforming, but uh, I think Rare kind of perfected the formula <laughs> with, with Banjo. Ooh. I know. Controversy. I know, I know. I've never <laughs> found anyone else who agrees with that, but I can't replay Mario 64 anymore. It's too too clunky, but I can I can replay this. Okay. Maybe that's just me. Oh, let us know in the comments below if you uh, share Dan's love of Banjo over uh, Mario. Yes. On the N64. And I'm sure you'll let me know as well if you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, this game was originally developed for the SNES, wasn't it? That's Back right, yeah. It started out as uh, Project Dream at Rare. It was the team that did Donkey Kong Country and Donkey Kong Country 2. Wow, um, okay. And then another team took over to do the third one on the SNES, whilst the, the team that did the first two uh, started development on a new game, which was supposed to have a pirate theme to it and star a young boy called Edison with a wooden sword. Right. Um, what happened? And uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it evolved um, as as most best most of the best video games do. It started as one thing and ended up as something else completely differently. Um, there is like one picture on the internet from an old issue of Retro Gamer uh, of of this little boy Edison in a in a vaguely Banjo Kazooie looking level. But uh, yeah, it, I think um, it was well, because it started out as a SNES game, and I think as soon as they realised that the N sixty four was the way to go, and they saw very early pictures of. Um, Mario running, they they just pulled it all over to the N64. It was like a, it was a, I think the biggest the team got was 15 people. Wow. And it took them less than two years from when they decided to make an N64 game to when Banjo actually came out, which was in this uh, country in the UK, the 17th of July, 1998. 1998. So it's, it's not, not far off, it's 20th year. No, 18 years. It's <sighs> quite frightening. I got, it, <laughs> I got it for my 15th birthday. Oh dear. Which, uh, I'm more than double that age now. It's quite frightening, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Little trick here. If you collect honeycomb pieces, you get more on your energy bar. Um, I may have already got it, but if you leave... I have, I've already got it. If you leave one up there, uh, leave one of these spinning things, it will appear at the top of that uh, totem pole before you uh -huh. actually get the jigsaw piece. 
little hint. And there you go. Top tip from Dan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And there's a really cool, uh, in Banjo-Tooie, which was also an N64, cool Easter egg in one of the levels. You can um, you find a pirate in the back of a, a pub in like a seaside level, and he's drunk and he's complaining that you stole his game, and he's actually a character model that was made <laughs> for the original, uh, whatever it would have been called. That's quite weird. Yeah. In a way. It's yeah. a nice touch, but that's very strange. Very breaking the fourth wall, but yeah, yeah. he's actually moaning that... Uh, you nicked his game. <laughs> this is one of the cool things in this as well. If you collected the mumbo tokens, the little spinny skull things. Whoa, did you hear that? <laughs> that was the rumble pack. Wow. <laughs> Back when they had some proper power in them. <laughs> uh, yeah, you collect the tokens and then on certain levels, it'll turn you into a, a creature that'll help you collect more jigsaw pieces. So that, that sort of kept it fun and fresh. You've turned into an ant. I've turned into an ant. Yeah, it gets more exciting than that. I will, I will admit, <laughs> this, is, this is level one. Do you get those shorts? So is that the, the ant enemies talking to you now? Yes. Yeah, they want my shorts. And the backpack. And the backpack, yeah. <laughs> Ants are bullies. They are. And not not nice. <laughs> oh, I always used to struggle with this, but Ooh, the camera's horrible. It is, yeah. There were some rudimentary camera controls on the yellow C buttons, as with most N sixty four games, but uh, nothing like what we used to do today. No. With a second analog stick. <laughs> Yeah, we don't realise how uh, easy we've got it these days with the uh, really game don't. controllers and the way they're, they're made. That's yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, detail missing when you're at distance from anything. You'll notice all the huts and beehives and tokens and notes have disappeared. It's just the raw level, just because the, the closer you... I'll try and show you, actually, if I jump over here, you should see it start to draw. Oh, there it is, yeah. Yeah, and then if I go over here as well, you'll see the notes as well. Just appearing... Oh, oh yeah, there they are, appearing in the distance, yeah. <laughs> you don't get that on the Xbox One, Xbox 360 version. Kind of ruins a bit of the fun, but... Uh, you see it all, do you? Yeah, you can just see it all from any distance. Oh, there you go, it's the difference Give, in the power nowadays. It gives away a few tricks, because you can see in the distance some enemies, but their animations aren't running, they're just frozen still. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. All right, here we are, level two. This is one of my favourite levels in the game as well. This is the seaside level. Treasure Tre Trove Cove. Treasure Trove Cove. Uh, Quite a cool entrance as well. <laughs> Jump into a, a chest. A chest. Not in the Dead or Alive fashion either. <laughs> oh. Oh. Ooh. A bit of a graphical slowdown there. Yeah. I think this is one of the first levels they worked on as well. I like that Ooh. infinite sea. Yeah. You just there merge you it into uh, solid blue and you're <laughs> off. I'm going to try and get this little thing down here that's called a Jinjo. But uh, there's five of these on every level, but there's also a shark in this level. Oh, okay. Can you see him? Stay in the, oh, yeah. Hey. If you stay in the water for too long, he gets you. Yeah, you can actually kill him. It's really difficult to do, but, uh, yeah, if you if you can line up your... Just crapping eggs out of him, are you? If you can crap eggs onto his head, he will, he will <laughs> die. As, as you may expect with a shark in a video game. <laughs> yeah, or in real life. Yeah. yeah. Um, as with Mario, I think one of the things that really made this game sort of fun to play was the, uh, the sheer amount of moves. And actually, the, uh, the game, when it first uh, became a, a sort of a bear rather than a boy... Um, they wanted to give him more moves, and they, they had that's where the backpack came from. As well as there are loads of collectibles in this game, like the feathers and the, the eggs and everything like that. Yeah. Um, and then they thought, well, if we want him to fly, we can have some wings pop out the backpack. And if we want him to run fast, we can have some legs pop out the backpack. And then they thought it looked a bit creepy. <laughs> so they thought it might be better to just invent this character that lives in his backpack, his best friend. Yeah, Kazooie. didn't they um, make the name because the the sound the instrument the kazoo is a really annoying yes. instrument. So yeah. and yeah. with the character being annoying, yeah. that's that's where the name kazooie yeah. came from. And I wouldn't want to reinforce any stereotypes, but in uh, in Diddy Kong Racing, where Banjo uh, first appeared as a, a playable character in the, on the player select screen, he did actually speak. He doesn't speak in this game; it's all mumbo jumbo. Um, but uh, they had he, him talking. Yeah, they had him talking in Diddy Kong Racing and. Uh, he did uh, have a southern, a southern American accent. <laughs> so, uh, I'm banjo. It's a proper like fairy tale kind of story. This like a witch, an evil witch, stealing Banjo's sister, and then you have to go and get her back. And she's turned her lair into all these levels. But I don't know. It is genuinely one of my favourite games ever. I don't know if that's just childhood nostalgia or uh, or, or solid gameplay. It's probably both. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having a lot of luck today. I don't normally do that without getting chomped. <laughs> no, so this this is one game that just completely eluded me. I have no idea why. It's just one that I never really, I never played, never I, experienced. 
I will admit, despite being a huge Rare fan and a huge N64 fan, I do have Donkey Kong 64 to play. I've only ever played it for like 10 minutes. So yeah, so one, I'm kind of saving it now because these, <laughs> such, these are such solid gaming experiences. It kind of feels like I've got a treat. Yeah, it's still to come. <laughs> no, I remember playing uh, Donkey Kong 64. Yeah, and with the the rap at the start of the, the oh, game yeah. and everything. Um, but the no, Banjo Kazooie was, like I said, one yeah. that just passed me by. They got the um, they got the difficulty curve right on this as well, um, which is always something tough to do with video games. But um, they kind of, by their own admission, I think in interviews I've read, they kind of made the second one a bit. It was a bit too big. They got really um really adventurous which isn't a bad thing but um it started to become quite a chore to collect some of the jigsaw pieces and right um, okay well, somehow it wasn't as much fun it's like that whole less is more thing of yeah keep it simple and well I, find, I mean i find games nowadays the ones that try and go too big and yeah. too open world they're yeah. just they're overwhelming and you just can't be bothered like witcher 3 was a good example every time you do one quest on that you get 20 more yeah and it's just i absolutely loved playing that but uh, i didn't finish it no, it's, when you want to complete a game as well, it's it's a little bit too much to do all of the side quests as well. I like the solid game experiences without getting too too over the top. I'm not sure I've ever finished this in, in one go, but um, I think the speedrunning record is somewhere around the two hour mark, maybe an hour and a half. Um, that's always fun to watch. Um, the, the speed it, run is it, just amazing. It tends, tends to take me seven or eight hours, <laughs> even after all these years. It's like, wow, well, how'd you do that in? And that's a hundred percent as well. Is that, and is that le- everything? Is that legitimate as well? Yeah, no, no, no glitching or anything. Yeah, yeah. I saw someone at um, Awesome Games done quick a couple of years ago. Hundred percent speed run. I think for a hundred percent, it's about just a, a little bit under two hours. I think the world record. Um, and that's with all the jigsaw pieces, all the musical notes, which also help with your progress. They open. Uh, doors. Oh, there's a little, there's a little <laughs> trick there. You have to um, you have to do that, but in mid air, and then you don't lose any energy. Oh, okay. But, uh, I, I messed it up. <laughs> yeah, you fell flat on your face. I really did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's never particularly a taxing game. So basically, all you've got to do here is write the name of the game on the floor before you run out of time. And just in case you needed help, it's written on the wall as well. Yeah. In case you forgot what game you were playing. Yeah, in case you forgot the name of the game and the hint isn't big enough. <laughs> I'm really, I really hope there's still some life in this. I know they tried to do something new with um, Nuts and Bolts, but that just that's, that wasn't a Banjo-Kazooie game. They could have done that with anything. No, what's the other one? Ukulele? Is that the, oh, yeah. Like the new one that's that's going to be in? cool. That's not too far away now. That's the original Banjo team trying to make a game of this style. But they, they did a Kickstarter for it, and it did really, really well. In fact, I think there were millions over the, over what they wanted. Wow. Um, it proves that people want these old experiences back yeah, again. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to play that. I think that'll have a real... Not, not necessarily nostalgic, but just a really good gameplay uh, edge to it. And First, I'll cut you down to size. Yeah, everyone rhymes. Why not? <laughs> the soundtrack to this I always thought was really good as well. There's a guy called Grant Kirkhope, and it's in the days when Rare had someone working uh, on in. You know how they have like separate areas in their HQ, like different barns, I think they call them, so people don't know what other people are working on. Okay. So consequently, every game had its own sound designer. So the the year and a half it took them to make this game, there was one guy just doing the music, and I think that wow. shows. <laughs> yeah, with the the music changing as you go to different areas. And yeah, that, that was yeah. really cool. That was one of the benefits of cartridge that would have been a lot more difficult to do on CD. You couldn't just have the music fade to a different track like that. Huh. Right, I'm going to go into the lair and see if I can open up one last level very quickly. Do you think? I think a lot of the N64 games still look fa- fantastic. Anyway, it's not like um, it's not like going too far back and you've got line graphics and. No, no, they are. They, they're good. It's just very. Um, oh look, I can't get blurry. any further. I don't have enough notes. Ah, oh. never mind. There was actually a feature in this called Stop and Swap that had to be abandoned and it, it was items you could collect in this game that you'd then be able to use in the second game and the only way that was going to work was that Rare figured out that the N64 remembered stuff for about 10 seconds on its internal memory <laughs> after you've switched the console off so you're going to collect stuff in this game switch the console off, pull the cartridge out, put the Banjo-Tooie cartridge in, and then it would remember and it would unlock bits in the second game. And that is built into this game. In fact, if I if I just finish this picture, which will open up another level. If I bring this screen up here and go all the way to the right, there you go, stop and swap. So I've got an ice key and a yellow egg. And oh, there, yeah. were, there were five more eggs as well to collect. 
Um, and that would have opened up secret areas in Banjo-Tooie, but either Nintendo got wind of this and didn't like what they were thinking, or they I think it's something to do with the hardware revision in the N64, and the memory went from 10 seconds to one second, which is a little bit, it's too, a little quick bit too quick to, to ask people to rip their cartridges yeah. out. So <laughs> they had to abandon it, but it was one of those sort of myths that it took people years to discover these secret areas, because they obviously they never unlocked, ever. I thought that was a really cool idea, totally ruined by uh, Nintendo being spoil sports. Yeah, no, that, that would have been a really nice yeah. feature. And no one, I don't think anything else has ever done that, other than swapping a disc for Final Fantasy or whatever. Yeah, but. yeah. 